Hey everyone, in this video we will go over the 2-3 zone defense, its strengths, weaknesses, and also how to execute traps from this defense, so stay tuned. It's holding him! That's a jump ball! You missed that ball! Fresh, he got whacked! Call a foul! Get up! How is that not a foul? The 2-3 zone is a basic zone defense that can work for all levels of basketball. It is especially easy to teach and learn for younger basketball players. Its strengths or advantages are 1. Protecting the inside of the paint against larger teams or teams with better skilled low post players. 2. It can deter dribble penetration and force outside or lower percentage shots. 3. Your taller players are better positioned to secure rebounds. And 4. This zone usually requires teams to be more patient in getting a good shot, so it can be used to control a game tempo. There are some weaknesses in the 2-3 zone. If you decide to run this zone, you must be willing to concede some outside shots, as it leaves the wings and baseline corners open. It's probably best not to run this against a good 3-point shooting team. You're also vulnerable in the middle and high post. It's best to communicate to your team how you will cover the high post as any well-coached team will attack the high post in the 2-3 zone. And like any good defense, communication is key. It's especially important in a zone defense where you will need to rely and trust your teammates. As a rule, most young teams do not communicate very well. In this video, we will cover basic coverage areas, how coverages look when the ball goes into specific areas of the court, and how to run an aggressive or trapping 2-3 zone. Our four principles for running any zone defense are force the offense to one side of the court, prevent penetration into the key, force the lowest percentage shot, and rebound. Limit the offense to only one shot per possession. Identifying these principles to your team will sharpen their focus on defense away from high-risk, low-reward efforts like blocking shots and swiping at the ball for steals. This field of focus requires more hustle and effort than it does athletic talent, and every player can be taught these principles. Basic Coverage The 2-3 zone is set up with a 2-guard top and 3 bottom defenders. Like every zone, Players are responsible for areas on the court rather than matching up with an individual opponent. The top two defenders are responsible for the top and wing areas. The bottom defenders cover the area around the lower key and baseline. Weaknesses in the zone are the perimeter and the middle of the key or the high post. Opposing coaches will often tell their players to penetrate the gaps in your 2-3 zone. This will often be used as a specific strategy designed to draw two defensive players together, leaving another opening vulnerable in your zone. Not every drive or probe into the gaps is intentional. However, if you start to see a lot of driving kick scenarios from your opponent, you should be aware of this tactic. Specific Coverages Discuss, teach, and practice with your team how you will cover the ball on the perimeter when it goes into the high post and when it enters the low post. Every pass by the offense should cause five defenders to move. Guarding the perimeter of the 2-3 zone. Here we will go over guarding the first pass. What is the first pass in basketball? Generally speaking, the first pass in basketball is a pass made by an offensive player to a player directly next to them. The second pass is to a teammate who isn't directly next to them. If the ball is at the top, these are the first passes, and these are the second passes. When the ball is on the wing, these are the first passes, and these are the second passes. And when the ball is in the corner, this is the first pass, and these are the second passes. So let's go over guarding the first pass on the perimeter. We'll start with the ball at the top, and for demonstrative purposes, all five offensive players are on the perimeter. When the ball is passed to the wing on a first pass, the closest top defender will pick up this player in their zone. 
the opposite guard will slide over toward the middle line and our bottom three defenders will shift toward the ball. When the ball is passed to the corner on a first pass from the wing, the closest bottom defender will close out on this player in their zone. The two top guards will slide down and our two bottom defenders will also move down below the level of the ball. A good rule to practice as a bottom defender is to never be higher than the ball and other offensive players. This will eliminate cuts to the basket that you cannot defend because you can't see them coming. Here's a look at the ball swinging around the perimeter. The 2-3 zone defensive players rotate the exact same way on both sides of the court. Now let's look at the second pass from the top to the baseline corners. When the second pass is made, the same defensive rotations are made by all five of our defenders. Player 3 will close out on the ball. Player 2 moves to cover the first pass. Player 1 drops down into the paint. And our 4 and 5 players drop down to stop any baseline cuts and maintain a strong middle zone coverage. Now let's look at the second pass from the wing. When this second pass is made, the same defensive rotations are made by all five of our defenders. Player four will close out on the ball, and player one moves to cover the first pass and bumps player four. Players two, three, and five rotate over towards the ball. Here's the second pass from the wing to the opposite corner. Player 4 will close out on the ball as player 1 moves to cover the first pass. All other defenders rotate toward the ball. Now let's look at the second pass coverage from the baseline corner. This second pass out to the top will be a close out and recover. Player 1 will close out on the ball to prevent an open shot, then drop down as player 2 rotates over. Some coaches will choose to keep one of the top guards out in this zone to force a side. I'll cover that later on in this video where I go over trapping from the 2-3 zone. This second pass or skip pass from the baseline corner is in player 1's zone, but player 4 will close out until player 1 can recover. The bottom defenders closing out on the wing need only remain until the top guard calls them off. They can either say something like bump or I got him to communicate to their teammate to rotate over. You rarely see the second pass from the baseline corner to the opposite corner, mainly because the rim and the backboard are in the way. But here's the zone rotation if you do see this pass. Now let's go over how to cover the ball when it goes into the high post. Against the 2-3 zone, you will typically see some variation of three guards outside the three-point arc and two post players that may interchange between high and low post, or they may also play a double high or a double low post. First, let's go over how to cover the high post from a top guard entry pass. Once the ball enters the middle or high post area, our five player will move up to defend this action. This will leave this area under the basket exposed. Players three and four must slide towards the middle to guard against any high-low pass or backdoor cuts. Even though our two top defenders are closer, they still need to be ready to cover a pass out to the wings. With the two-three zone rotated over, we'll look at a high post entry from the wing with a high and low post ball side. When the pass goes into the high post from the wing, our three player will guard the low post and our five player moves up to guard the high post. Our top guard will slide down to help with the high post but is still responsible for this top guard. And our other bottom defender will move toward the middle but is still responsible to close out on the wing guard. Many offensive tactics against a 2-3 zone defense will send a player to flash into the high post to receive the entry pass. 
If our top guard properly rotates down and drops into the key when the ball is in the corner, this can often be enough to deter this entry pass. Here the ball is passed into the corner and our top defender doesn't drop down into the key. When the high post flash happens, our four defender must move with this offensive player to protect the high post. Sometimes this will be enough to deter the entry pass. If the pass does get into the high post, we are in great position to defend. We have on-ball coverage, the high to low post pass is covered, and any kick out to the perimeter is also covered. Hey everyone, thanks for watching part 1 of my video on how to run a 2-3 zone defense. Please check out part 2 of this video where we will finish the specific coverage section on how to cover the low post in a 2-3 zone defense and how to run an aggressive or trapping 2-3 zone. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're going to try this out, I wish you much success. Please leave me a comment and let me know how it worked out for you and your team. If you have recorded video of your team running this or any of the plays you've learned from my channel and would like for me to create a YouTube video reviewing the execution of the play, please email me at coachrustvideos at gmail.com. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel for more videos to come. Blessings to you and have a great season.